Good morning, Journey. Good morning. I really wanted to dance to that music, but my wife told me, above all else, Kyle, do not dance. You want people to stay in the room. So, uh, so good to be back with you. I want to thank Pastor Dustin and the, the directional leadership team for the invitation to come back and be here at Journey. I just want you to know I, I love your pastor and TJ. I just love them so much. And I want you to know how special privilege you are to have a pastor. I'm, I work with pastors across the country, and they're not all the same. But I'm telling you, your pastor loves God with a sincere heart, and he loves you. Every time I'm on the phone with him, he's bragging about you, talking about you. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so it's awesome. He loves you so much. And I want to thank Pastor Kevin and Pastor Tammy and just the team. I love working with them. And then uh, Lake County Campus. Let's give it up for Lake County Campus and Pastor Russell. <laughs> Woo! Hey, it's so good to be back in the, the Orlando area. You know, I've lived in uh, Florida, I've lived in Texas, and I've lived in Tennessee. And I want you to know, you have some of the best barbecue in the world right here in Florida. I mean, come on. And uh, I went back to an original. I, I was here a month ago, and I went to one of my favorites called Bubba Lou's Bodacious Barbecue. Come on, can I get a witness? Mm, hallelujah, let's give an invitation right now. And. Um, I mean, when you come out smelling like it, you know it's the real deal, you know? But last night I went to a Florida original from 1968, Little Sonny's Barbecue, and uh, man, the Lord met me there. It was so good. And then they had this picture of, of uh, peach cobbler egg rolls. I texted it to my wife. I said, should I try this? She says, by all means. So I had permission. So I went in even though I did not need it. And I ate the egg rolls with peach cobbler. Let me tell you, woo, Jesus is good. Man, it was good. Pastor Kevin, I was shaking. That was before the game. Woo, I tell you what, it's exciting. So if I get excited up here, it's the sugar, it's kicking in, all right? And uh, it is so good to be with you. You know, I feel this morning there's some people in the room who need some peace. You need some peace in your life? You need some peace in your thoughts? You need more peace? Jesus is Jehovah Shalom. He's Prince of Peace. Can you say amen to that? And so I just wanna, just before we get into the message today, if you find yourself in life today, either at Lake County or here, and you need more peace in your life, would you just stand up? I wanna pray for you right now. If you need more peace in your life, more peace over your mind, more peace over your heart, I need more peace in my life. I just wanna pray some peace over you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So Father, you see people standing at both campuses. You see people standing online, wherever they're watching. We just acknowledge we live in a crazy world. And we need you, Jesus, to be our peace. So for every person standing, right now, Jesus, Prince of Peace, be that for them. Father God, Jehovah Shalom, be that for them. Holy Spirit, bring peace to their minds. Bring peace to their hearts. May they walk out of here today knowing they are more full of you and more full of your peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm so excited about Journey's Got Talent because I look out at you today and I just see the talent that God has poured into this place. You know that everything that God wants to do in and through Journey, he's given the talent for it. He's given every gift that Journey needs to accomplish the mission that God has put before Journey Church. I just love that. And as Pastor Dustin talked about, shaping spiritual gifts, heart, abilities, personality, and experiences. And if, if Pastor Dustin would have called me and said, hey, we're doing this series called Journey's Got Talent. Here's the topics. Which one do you want? I would have chose this one. Because this is my favorite. I get to talk about our heart today. This is my favorite topic in all of this series. I'm just so glad it worked out that I get to talk about it because this, this is my heart right here is to talk about our heart. You see, when I do, when you do what God shaped you to do, listen to this, when you do what God shaped you to do, you will enjoy it. Jesus will be glorified. Isn't that great? There is good fruit 
and the church will be built up. When you do what you're shaped to do, when you do it and you walk in it, you will enjoy it. Jesus will be glorified. There is good fruit that will happen and the church will be built up. Journey, you've got talent. Now, Solomon said in Proverbs 27, 19, he says, as a face is reflected in water, so the heart reflects the person. Say that with me. As a face is reflected, let's say that out loud together, you ready? <laughs> as a face is reflected in water, so the heart reflects the person. The heart, what is the heart? The heart is our passion, it's our desires, it's our interests that God has put inside of you. Last week he talked about discovering your spiritual gifts. Today we're gonna to talk about giving your heart to God, surrendering your heart to God, dedicating your heart to God. And one of my favorite stories of this is a story in 1 Samuel chapter one. In fact, I encourage you sometime this week to go back and read 1 Samuel chapter one. It's a story of uh, Elkanah and Hannah. Elkanah and Hannah, uh, they would go up every year to bring sacrifices to the, to the priest, Eli the high priest, his sons Phineas, and um, whatever the other one's name was. And uh, anyway, <laughs> I just went blank. And Hoffney, yeah, thank you. And uh, so they went up to bring sacrifices and, and she would never participate though in, in the, a lot of it with joy at all because she could not have a kid. Hannah was barren. The Lord had not allowed her to become pregnant and to have a child. And one day she's standing in the, in the temple there and she is, uh, she's praying and Eli's off to the side and he sees her and she's, her lips are moving but nothing is coming out. And she's crying, she's weeping before God. And Eli thinks she's drunk. In fact, he goes over and he kind of scolds her. Why would you drink? Why don't you stop drinking if you're gonna come into the house in the presence of God? She says, oh, oh, oh sir, I'm not drinking, but I'm crying out to God for a miracle. And Eli says, hey, whatever you've asked of God, may it be so. So she and Elkanah go back to their home and over time she becomes pregnant with a son. And after the son, they name him Samuel, is weaned. Before he's weaned, she brings him to the temple and this is what she says. First Samuel chapter one, verse 27. I asked the Lord to give me this boy. She asked the Lord with all of her heart, give me a son. And he has granted my request. Can you say amen? Now I am giving him to the Lord. Now I am giving him to the Lord and he will belong to the Lord his whole life and they worshiped the Lord there. Now moms, you understand Hannah's heart here. She's giving her whole heart to, the God, to God, isn't she? I mean her whole heart. The deepest desire of her heart was to have a, a son. And God answers that prayer and she keeps her in the deal. She brings her son to the Lord and gives him to the Lord her whole heart and says, he's yours and he'll serve you his whole life. What a beautiful picture of dedicating one's heart. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to dedicate our heart, our passions, our interests. He wants us to dedicate those back to him because they come from him. And he wants us to give our heart back to him. So what keeps us from dedicating, what keeps me from dedicating my heart to God? What is it? What keeps me from giving him all of my heart? Well, let me give you a few things. First of all, 
disappointment. You ever experienced any disappointment in life? Come on. You see, here's where disappointment comes. We, we, we come to God and um, we surrender. To become a follower of Christ, you give him your heart. You give him your whole heart. That's what it means to become a Christian. And then we have certain expectations, though, that we bring to that relationship, not realizing that we've given him our whole heart. In fact, we don't even belong to ourselves anymore. We belong to God. Can, I, can you say amen to that? We're not our own anymore. We actually belong to God. But sometimes we forget that. Have you ever forgotten that? Uh, I have. Sometimes we forget that and we come to this relationship with God with expectations. And when those expectations aren't met, you know what happens? Disappointment sets in. Unmet expectations lead to disappointment. And sometimes we then begin to hold our heart back from God because we've been disappointed, not because of him, but because of expectations we brought to the relationship. You see, when we have disappointment, it can lead to fear in our life because, well, you know, I, I, I gave God my whole heart. Actually, you probably didn't. Because if you did, you wouldn't be disappointed. Are you with me? Come on. This will go a lot better if we just work together. But fear sets in. What, what, what if I'm disappointed again? And so we begin to protect ourselves from being disappointed. Fear sets in. You ever been there? And then this strange thing that doesn't come from God at all, but it shows up in our life because it comes from darkness, happens in our life. We begin to experience guilt because we go to church and we know that God wants our whole heart and we show up at 8.30 on, on a Sunday morning and, uh, or we show up on a Thursday night, you, you name it, whatever, and we show up and we show up and we show up and we know that God wants our whole heart. In fact, we, we may be reading the word and he wants our whole heart, but I'm not giving him my whole heart because I don't want to be disappointed again. I'm fearful. I'm fearful and guilt begins to set in. And guilt never leads to life. Guilt never comes from God. The difference between guilt and conviction is this. Conviction always leads to a way out to life. When the Holy Spirit convicts you of something, he always shows you the next steps to get to life. Are you with me? When guilt comes, it just, there's no way out. There's no way out. And so guilt can keep us from giving God our whole heart. Bitterness. What's, what's bitterness? It's when I have these disappointments in life, my expectations aren't met uh, by someone or, or, or by God himself or by someone else or by, by Pastor Dustin. He doesn't meet my expectation. I waved at him from across the lobby and he didn't wave at me. He probably didn't even see you, but that's okay. But you, you, you're, you're ticked off now. You know what I'm saying? He should have waved at me. Does he know how much I give? He should have waved at me. And listen, when we have disappointments that we don't deal with, it leads to unforgiveness in our life. And unforgiveness that's not dealt with by the Holy Spirit working in us leads to bitterness in our life. And bitterness is good for no one. Bitterness hurts you, and it hurts everyone around you. Bitterness hurts you, and it hurts everyone around you. It really does. It hurts the cause of Christ. In fact, I would say in, in the United States of America, the biggest issue we face in the church is unforgiveness that leads to bitterness. Scientists have proven this. 
The majority of physical issues we face in America are a result of unforgiveness and bitterness in our life. It affects your whole being. And it affects those around you. And so we get bitter. And we just protect our heart. And we're never going to give it all to God again. And God says, listen, I got more for you. I got John 10, 10 life. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Listen, if, if you got unforgiveness and bitterness in your life and fear and guilt, he's at work in your life. He's winning in your life. Don't let him win through the power of Christ. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Can I get a witness there? So listen. Press in. Press in to God. Don't let him win. So how do I open my heart to God? How do I dedicate my heart to God? If it's not fully his right now, how do I dedicate my heart to God? Number one, open it to Jesus. Just open it to Jesus. I promise you this, Jesus will never fail you. He never will. Open your heart to Jesus. I love this passage of scripture. Revelation chapter three, verse 20. It says, look, and this is written to Christians. We use it a lot of times when we're sharing the gospel, but it's really written to Christians, to the church. It says, look, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Jesus wants to hang out with you. Paul said in Ephesians 3, he wants to make your heart his home. He wants to be at a home in your heart. If you come to my house and here's what I'm gonna, we're gonna tell you, my wife is gonna tell you, hey, Everything in the fridge is, is yours. <laughs> if you want it, you can have it. If you want to put your feet up on the coffee table, go ahead. Our house, your house. And that's what Jesus is looking for us. Just open your heart. Let me come in. Let me be at home in your heart. Don't, don't keep any rooms locked from me. Trust me with your heart. Give me your heart. Give me your passions. Give me your interests. Give me your desires. Give me your heart. Just open it up to him. Number two, let God heal it. Some of you are here today and you need your heart to be healed by God. Yes, you know him as your savior. You've put your trust in Jesus Christ to be your savior and to forgive you your sins. But truth be known, you've allowed your heart to be hurt and you need God to heal your heart today. Here's the good news. He's a specialist at healing hearts. He loves to heal hearts and he wants to heal your heart today. He wants to make it whole. He wants to make it without fear. He wants to fill your heart with faith. He wants to make your heart strong. He wants to make your heart to be where you can take risk. He loves you and he wants to heal your heart. Oh man. Psalms 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Ephesians 3, 16, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will go down deep into God's love and keep you strong. Let God heal your heart. Number three, after he heals your heart, listen to it. Listen to your heart. Just listen to it. God's put desires in your heart. He's put passions in your heart. So listen to your heart. Ask these questions. What do I love to do? 
Like, what's just what I really love to do? What do I dream of doing? What do I dream of doing? You guys dream? I tell you when I dream, I dream when I'm, when I'm running. First of all, I dream of oxygen. Yes. But I dream, that's when I dream. It's when I hear from God. It's when I'm running. What fascinates you? What if, if, what, what if you were doing this, you would never get bored? Because this just fascinates you. It's a passion in your life. Where have I been most effective? Just look at your life. You've been living life for an amount of time. Where have you been most effective in your life? That's a passion. That's a desire that God has put in you. Let me tell you one of my desires. One of my spiritual gifts is, uh, is the gift of exhortation. Now, exhortation doesn't just mean that I want to encourage you. I do. I love encouragement, okay? But exhortation means more than that. It means I see you over here at point A, but I know that Christ wants you over here at point B, and I know that he can get you there. And so I'm going to do everything I can to help you move from point A to point B in Jesus Christ. That's exhortation. And part of exhortation, the, the, the part that I love, is connecting people with people who can help them. I love, like absolutely love, connecting people. I was just on a trip in Brazil, and I was with a ministry team of the 120 people. We were in this uh, beautiful city in Brazil ministering to people, and there were people from all over the world on our ministry team. And you know what one of the greatest joys of my life was that week? Was connecting people with other people from other countries. Hey, you've got to meet this person. In fact, by the end of the week, people were coming up to me at dinner time and saying, man, you are great at connecting people. You're just a connector. And let me tell you, this trip would not have been the same if you would not have connected me with this person from South Africa. Thank you for connecting me. You know what? I got great joy out of it. It was a passion of mine. The fruit was there. Jesus was glorified. Listen to your heart. What do you enjoy doing? Listen to your heart. Number four. Look at my options. I love this verse in Proverbs 19 too. Proverbs 19 too. Enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Say that with me. Enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. How many of you with me have lived out this part of the verse, huh? <laughs> Woohoo! Let's go! Yeah! Oh, man. Haste makes mistakes. Man, I think Solomon saw the first half of my life right there. Haste makes mistakes. So listen, look at your options. Journey's gonna help you. Look at all the options where you can get involved in the life of Journey Church because you've got talent. And God's given your heart options, desires. So look at your options and, and listen. You may have a gift to be in a certain area, but that's not your passion, your heart. Don't go there. You can go there for a short season, but don't stay there or it will steal your heart. Are you with me? Your long-term ministry should be where not only you're gifted, but where your heart is. Your passions are. You can do a short service over here and there's a time in the church, in the life of the church where we need everyone to do a, a short stint somewhere just because there's an incredible need in that moment. But where you serve in the body needs to be where you're gifted and where your heart is. That's where you will thrive and experience the abundant life that Jesus talks about in John 10, 10. So look at your options. Your church will help you with that. Number five, launch out in faith. Launch out in faith. Listen, you cannot live the Christian life apart from faith. 
you will have to take a risk again. You will have to put your heart out there again. You will never experience all that Christ has for you unless you're willing to step out in faith and to risk being hurt again. You can never love unless you risk loving. You can never love someone unless you risk being hurt. And you'll never experience the joy of Jesus just taking your heart and giving you its desires until you step out in faith and take a risk again. My life's verse, Psalms 37, 4. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Listen, this is how this works. If you will delight in the Lord, two things are going to happen. One of the two things. If your desires are not aligned with him, as you delight in him, he will change your desires. Are you with me? But either way, they're still your desires then. They're from him, but they're your desires. And then he will give them to you. I could tell you story after story after story how God has been faithful to his promise of this verse in my life as I take delight in him. I must do my part. Take delight in him and he will give you your heart's desires. Paul said in Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. Now listen, this is about giving God your heart. (laughs) Work at it with all your heart as working for who? Does he see you when you work? Does he? Do you know that right now? You may know it, but you don't hear it from him necessarily, but you'll feel it, okay? And one day you'll hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. One day. But listen, for the Lord, not for men. Here's where we get messed up. We only give him part of our heart because we want to hang on to this part right here. We want people to recognize us. Give him your whole heart. Trust me, it'll be better. (laughs) Why would you want to settle for the praise of people when you can receive the praise of your creator? It's so much better. Listen, you hang around me for a little while, you're gonna be disappointed you will never be disappointed with him. And today, he's knocking. He's knocking at the door of your heart. He's saying, hey, one more time. Come on, let's do this. Let me in. Give me your whole heart. And I will protect it. And I will love you. And I will give you a life of fulfillment like you could never imagine. It's a kingdom principle. Ephesians 3.20. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Listen, Hannah gave her son to the Lord. You know what God did for Hannah? He gave her more sons and more daughters. If you will take your heart today and give it to him, he'll give you more. More. More than you can imagine. 
give you more. Oh, would you just put your hands out like this? Jesus, as best we know how, we step out in faith today and we give you our heart, all of it, for your glory, for your service, for you. In Jesus' name, amen.